is a problem about the gravitational force. In this problem, three identical masses of 20 kilograms each are placed on the vertices of an equilateral triangle whose side is two meters. And the question is, you know, ignoring all the other particles in the universe, what is the magnitude and direction of the net gravitational force on each of the masses due to the other two masses? So the first thing I'm, I'm going to think of is this is an application of the gravitational force. And in the gravitational force, the force is equal to g times the uh, first mass, the second mass, over the distance between them squared. So um, I'm going to isolate each of the masses. I'm going to figure out what the forces are on each of the masses. And then I'm going to add that vectorially on each of the masses to find out the resultant net force on each of the masses. So to start with, I'm going to label these masses A, B, and C, for example. And this distance, which is um, the 2 meters, um, as per the head of the question, this is the distance RAB, the distance between A and B. And this is RAC, and this is RBC, and they're all equal to 2 meters. And each one of these masses is 20 kilograms. So if I want to isolate A, for example, and just look at what kinds of forces are acting on A, there is the uh, gravitational force from B. So I'm going to label that FAB because A pulls on B with FAB and B pulls on A with FAB as well. And C also pulls on A with FAC. So let's figure out what each of these forces is. So FAB is going to be equal to G, the mass of A, the mass of B, divided by the distance between A and B squared, which in this case is going to be equal to G multiplied by the 20 kilograms mass of A, 20 kilograms mass of B, because they're identical, divided by the distance between them, which is 2 meter, all squared. I know that g is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. And I know that, um, so then if I look at 20 times 20, that's 400, divided by 2 squared, that's 4. So 400 by 4, that's 100 times g. So that's equal to 6.673 times 10 to the minus Instead of 11 now, I'm going to take 2 out because there's 100. So this is going to be minus 9. And this is going to be newtons. So the 10 to the minus 9 is nano. So I can just write this as 6.673 nanonewtons. Okay, so this is, I figured out FAB. Now to go to FAC. I'm going to write G, and then now it's the mass of A, and then C is the one that's attracting it, so that's mass of C, over the distance between A and C squared. B's, the mass of A happens to be the same, common in here. Mass of B happens to be the same as mass of C, and the distance between A and C is the same as the distance between A and B. So in fact, this is going to come out to exactly the same answer. but it's going to have a different direction. Okay, so I'm going to call this number, let's say, F. So then, um, if I look at what's happening to A, the free body diagram of A, there are two forces acting on it. F. And these Fs make, I know this is an equilateral triangle, so this is 60 degrees right here. And so I'm going to choose my axes to be the one that bisects this angle and the one perpendicular to it. So I'm going to call this X. I'm going to call this Y. And I'm going to look at the components of each of these forces in the X and Y. So since this is a bisector, that makes this 30 degrees and makes this 30 degrees. 
And then if I want to look at um, the components of this force, FAB, I'm going to look at the Y component and the X component. So I'm going to write a table in which I look at each of the forces and I'm going to look at um, their components. So I have a table here that I'm going to write the force, its Y component, and its X component. This is a small table, but it, you know it's a good practice to make tables so that you're not missing any of the forces. So this first force, FAB, has a magnitude of F and an angle with the y-axis that is 30 degrees. So therefore, its y-component is going to be F cosine 30, and it's going to be pointing opposite to what I chose as the positive. So it's going to be minus F cosine 30 degrees. And the x-component is going to be pointing opposite to my what I chose as the positive x and it's going to be the magnitude f multiplied by sine the angle 30 because it's the opposite so it's equal to minus f sine 30 degrees now as for fac its y component is also the magnitude f cosine the angle 30 and it's also pointing down. However, its x component now is pointing in the opposite direction. It's the same magnitude as the x component of FAB, but it's pointing in the opposite direction. So it's F sine 30, and it's pointing along x hat in the positive. So now if I want to look at the net forces that are acting on A, then I sum the y components. I come up to minus 2F cosine 30 and if I sum the x components I find that they cancel each other out so that makes sense because this y is a line of symmetry therefore the x components are going to cancel each other out and the y components are going to add up and the resultant force is going to look like twice f cosine 30 twice f cosine 30 is equal to minus 2 times 6.673 nanonewtons cosine 30 is going to come out to um, minus 11.55 nanonewtons. So that's the resultant force on A. So now by the symmetry of the problem, if I look at A and I find that the resultant force on A, so if these are my A and then B and C, and if I look at A and I find that the resultant force is straight down to minus Y and it's equal to minus 11.55 Newtons, if I rotate my problem and look at B, I find that B is in fact the in the same situation as A was before. So if it has two forces that are acting on it due to C and A that are exactly equal to the other forces because of the symmetry of the problem, then of course its resultant is going to be pointing, the, the one bisecting the angle as well. This is going to be 30 degrees, and this is 30 degrees. The same thing for C, if I rotate as well, and I look at C, C is also going to be pointing towards the bisector of the angle, where this is 30, and this is 30 as well. So then, um, the magnitude of each of the forces is going to be minus 11.55 nanonewtons, or the magnitude I should say is 11.55 nanonewtons, and the directions of these are going to be the directions that bisect these angles. So in the case of A, if I make a choice here, then this is going to be in the minus Y, for B is going to be 30 degrees from plus X, and the C is going to be 30 degrees from minus X.